Hello, Chemistry 2342. This is the end of Chapter 17, Amides and Nitriles. Okay, as we've been going down the reactivity series of the uh, carboxylic acids, we started with acid chlorides being the most reactive, going down to uh, anhydrides, esters, and now we're going to look at the amides and the nitriles, which are a version of the amides here. So we've seen how we can make it from acid chlorides and anhydrides and also the conversion of the esters, but you can also make it directly by the conversion of a carboxylic acid in a mean in the presence of heat. So let's look at that reaction as being specific to just this series that we haven't talked about yet. So we can't just take it and react it with uh, the acid and the base directly because what's going to happen is that you're going to get the acid base reaction and so you, what you're going to end up with is an ammonium salt with a carboxylate anion okay so that's the first thing that's going to happen the reaction is not going to progress anymore until you heat it up when you heat it up to the point where it can remove the water what will happen is you can actually form the primary amides plus equivalent of water so this happens typically in temperatures greater than 100 degrees, and, but you have to use a one-to-one -one reaction of the, the base with the acid to be able to do this. Okay. So we can also use another compound called DCC, which is dicyclohexylcarbodiimide. So a carbodiimide is a derivative of a carboxylic acid made out of uh, uh, carbonic acid in which it can liberate a, an equivalent of an amine. So let's look at what we have here. So we can promote an amide formation by converting the carboxylate OH to a better leaving group. So in the presence of DCC, notice here it looks kind of like a nitrile right here. What it's going to do is it's actually going to help remove OH from the system here and create the new carbonyl and the water here, plus taking one of the hydrogens from the amine to give us the other hydrogen to give us to this dicyclohexylurea, okay? So when we do that, we end up with the formation of our amide. Okay. So the other way we've already seen before is to actually take an acid chloride. Acid chloride, we can react it with any nucleophile specifically in this case it'll be an amine based nucleophile it'll generate our intermediate tetrahedral species and then chloride being our weakest base is of course eliminated giving us our amide plus our carboxylic acid our salt of our uh, hydrogen chloride given off okay so we can do that with any species here making a primary secondary or tertiary amides we can, of course, make amides from anhydrides right here. If we add two equivalents of our uh, amine, what we'll end up with is one amide. We'll get from that, from the reaction of these electrons with this kicking out OH. But then notice, because we've kicked out the oxygen with this system, we're going to make a, the other equivalent is going to be the ammonium salt of the carboxylate anion. So we're only going to make one equivalent of the amide from an anhydride, and then we're gonna make one equivalent of this salt, okay? So we can also make them from esters. Again, this is acting as a nucleophile coming in and attacking here, and the base being the stronger, the amine being the stronger base, it's gonna kick out the alcohol, okay? This tends to be a little bit slow and can be acid catalyzed, but what really helps this reaction is the idea that the, the, the alcohol is the weaker base in the system, and so it's driven to completion in that system. Okay. So if we take cyclic anhydrides and we have a primary or uh, amine or ammonia, we can create what's called an imide. Now an imide is when you start with an anhydride, and you form the first step here is forming an amide right here, and then some kind of salt with the other carboxylic acid, just like in the previous slide. And then once we do that, we can get to this uh, hydrated form right here. And so this would be our amic acid. 
And then by just removal of water, we can turn this into an amide. What makes an amide different than an amide is an amide has the single carbonyl on the nitrogen. An amide has two carbonyls on the nitrogen. So we go from a single carbonyl on a nitrogen to two carbonyls going from an amide to an imid. Okay. So another reaction with amides is the fact that since they are the least reactive species, it's very hard for them to get to go back unless we use an acid or base catalyzed uh, hydration. So we can take with water. In fact, uh, the amides are quite stable to water in the neutral conditions. You can boil them for days and days and days and nothing will happen. But if you add some acid there, you can drive the reaction to completion by having the ammonium salt come out. Or if you have a large excess of water in a base, you can form the carboxylate salt, which then can be isolated and the amine can be uh, taken off as well. So these are commonly used in other systems. For example, going from this acid amide, you can do a large excess of water and get to the ammonium salt plus the acetic acid. Or in the case of this methyl uh, amino benzoate, we can convert to the benzoic acid salt plus the methyl amine. Okay. So the the um, mechanism for the hydrolysis of this uh, involves the use of the hydroxide as a nucleophile to create our uh, intermediate where we have all four of the systems on here. Now you have to create one that's the better leaving group. So in the case here, if we have the base hydrolyzed, if we have the base catalyzed system, we have one equivalent of base attacks the carbonyl to give you your intermediate. You have the second equivalent base to deprotonate the hydroxide. This is important because uh, the O minus two is a really bad leaving group. And so that we can actually have the amine now is the weakest base of the set and can leave and deprotonate the water in the system, giving you our carboxylic acid salt plus our free amine plus hydroxide ion. Okay, so the key here is you have to have two equivalents. One is doing the nucleophilic addition reaction, and then the second one is deprotonating the uh, OH to give us our amine as our better leaving group. Okay, so a nitrile is basically a carboxylic acid amide right here that has been deprotonated. So if you can think of this reaction as we remove this oxygen and these two hydrogens, we can end up losing that water to give us our nitrile. That being said, we can make these nitriles either in that way or using them by nucleophilic substitution. So we can use SN2 reactions uh, or, uh, to do this by taking an alkyl halide, reacting it with a nitrile group to give us this new carbon-carbon bond. Remember, this is the first reaction where we created that new carbon-carbon bond and we extended the chain by one carbon, okay? So this will happen with any number of SN2 or SN1 type reactions. Now, uh, we can all, now that we have it there, we can use it for a variety of things, okay? So the first thing we can do is use it as a protected group of a carboxylic acid. So using acid-catalyzed, uh, hydrolysis, we can regenerate our carboxylic acid. So if we had our amide, we dehydrated, we can convert our carboxylic acid, or we can use our base catalyzed hydrolysis to create our acid salt. Okay. Another useful thing we can do with the nitrile is because we just used it to add an extra carbon to a chain, we can now reduce it down to a primary amine. Because the nitrogen's at the end of the chain, we can use LAH to reduce down both of the double bonds in between the carbon and the nitrogen to add one equivalent of hydrogen across one, one equivalent of hydrogen across the second one to give us a new uh, primary amine, which then we can go on and do additional reactions. Okay. Now, if we, instead of reacting with the lithium aluminum hydride, we use dibol, we can actually reduce down this carbon here 
down to an aldehyde. It's another way to get to an aldehyde. We've reduced it down to give us an imine as our intermediate. I have a nitrogen here with a hydrogen here and our carbonyl there. And then we can reduce off this nitrogen, uh, sorry, hydrolyze off this uh, nitrogen here with the second step water to give us an aldehyde. So the really cool part here is that we can start by with uh, like a bromobenzene, create a Grignard out of it, react it with a cyano compound, and then reduce off the nitrogen to give us an aldehyde. Okay. So another thing that can, we can use these for is to use them as the substrate on a Grignard reaction. So we can take this as our partially positive uh, portion of our molecule and react it with one equivalent of a Grignard reagent or a lithium reagent, and it'll give us an intermediate that we then have to hydrolyze. It'll have to hydrolyze off that nitrogen to give us a ketone. And so one example of that would be to take this uh, cyanobenzene right here, react it with one equivalent of methyl Grignard, and we'll end up, after hydrolyzing off the nitrogen, we'll end up with this ethyl benzoate, uh, ethyl benzyl ketone. And that is all we have for carboxylic acid derivatives.